and the center is going to be all the library lib librarians and the center is going to be all the library yeah hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of the lbsmp as you can see i finally have wings so that means we can actually start building now i have an idea for a pretty cool build that's going to use up all of uh, Bambi's villagers. But before we do that, we're going to have to find a slime chunk. And uh, yeah, let's get right on into it. Slimes can spawn anywhere under layer 40 in specific chunks. These chunks spread out randomly in the world and differ from seed to seed. If we had the seed to this world, we'd be able to look it up via chunk base. But this is a no public seed server. We have to go about it the old fashioned way. We're going to dig down to layer 39 and span some chunks, using fencing to separate out the chunks. Later if we hear a slime in the area, we just need to climb down and see what chunk it's in. Simple enough. From there we can dig out the slime chunk and build up a slime farm. We may want to get a beacon for that step. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and start working on the groundwork or uh, the underground work for the dungeon build. So we have a lot of villagers from Bambi and we're going to recruit them to work in our underground facility. And these valued employees are all going to be in their own cubicle with their own personal trainer. Yeah, this is going to be one of those time lapse videos, isn't it?
Alright, that's enough of that. So I've done a little work off screen figuring out what trades I want to go where. The on-site perimeter is going to be full of support trades such as farmers, armors, toolsmiths, weaponsmiths, fishermen, whatever we might want. And the center is going to be all the librarians with specific trades. This is the layout I'm thinking about. Note that the left and right side only have four villagers while the tops and bottoms have five. This is due to the training mechanic. So when I press this button, all the villagers drop down and they are separated from the zombie by these trap doors. Now if we take a look at the corner here, we can see that there is a trap door in the corner. Well, I can't really place two in a single block. So that's why I have four on one side and five on the other because we can't have five and five because then two villagers would share a corner. For this circuit, I simply have a button powered sticky piston moving in a observer. This creates a one tick pulse when I press the button, causing the sticky piston underneath here to either pull down or spit up its block. The block that the villager just so happens to be standing on. Last time lapse this episode, I promise. All right, so what do we got going on here? We have we have a couple of villagers that we dragged down from up above, plus plus we relocated some and added some more. Oh yeah, this is a villager that I uh, retired. Yeah, nothing uh, nefarious there. So I was putting up signs on all the ones that. And I'm wanting to keep. I just got a trade here that I do want to keep, so I should probably get that trade in. And if I'm going to do that, I actually need to buy some books. There we go. I guess I could have just bought the books from him. Whoops. Alright, so his trade is locked in. So yeah, you trade with them once and you get their trade locked in, and then you can, you know, throw a boat down and do whatever you want with them. I'm gonna have to figure out a more permanent, not permanent, but more, more repeatable way of doing that. There you go. Uh, where you at? So this is my fire protection four, which is going right here. Basically, you just line them up and just back them in. Takes a minute. Now, if I go back too far, he's going to start suffocating that block. And you can kind of see that he's lined up in a holding pin right now, but as soon as I leave, well, I'm going to take damage, but he's going to shift forward. So he's not exactly aligned in that spot that I want him in. So basically what I've been doing is a trap door in front so he can't escape. Look at his big head. Well, his big head is inside this iron trap door, but it's stuck from like, exiting out because of that trap door then throw down a bucket of water the water pushes him back now he's locked in and I can get rid of that and throw his workstation down uh, label it this is protection protection Four. There. So you have your protection four, fire protection four. Going to be putting the rest of them up here. That actually doesn't make any sense anymore. I'll replace that momentarily. Basically, every single one of these I'm going to be filling up, which is going to cause a little bit of lag in this area. And of course, all the uh, center guys, they're going to be filled with these guys. 
Good luck turns. Work. Oh, I have all these here, so when I'm moving the boats around, it's just, uh, let's see. Yeah, I can place a boat on here and, yeah, travel around on top of the scaffolding. And as you saw, slide it right into these slots. Boats are really slow. Oh, hey, you trained up. All right. Unbreaking one, that's useless. Guess I gotta wait for him to work right around noonish, and then I'll be able to. Basically, just keep swapping out the lectern until I get the trade I want. Hey, Enderman. I'll just pick up your dirt blocks, run around, and throw them wherever. Go that way. There we go. I mean, I don't know if they can run past. It'd be really cool if they couldn't run past. I don't know if they can just run past the boat or not. There we go. We got the next villager. Mending. We already got one of those. I guess I'll just set up a little temporary training area. Oh. Let's try not to do that. Ooh, look at the C3. Yeah, we will take that one. Okay, it looks like he's lined in good. Ah, uh, he did not. You were standing on the boat. Get in the boat. Alright, maybe that's the trick. Line them up against one side, then break the boat. Place down your lectern, pick up your dirt. Or, to make it even easier, just line them up in, kind of in the middle here. Curse of Binding. Everything went quiet. I think I just got disconnected. Oh, there it goes. All the sound all at once. wonder if that recorded. <laughs> if that was just something glitchy on my end. Well, we'll see when I look back at the footage. Channeling. Boat facing that way. Pop open the door. That's an easy process. I need lure three, so this guy is just a waste of space. Time for you to retire. He's drowning in his work. Oh my god, this take too long. There he goes. Let it be a lesson to all of you. You don't do your job, he'll drown in your work. Oh, he must have left. On his own accord. I guess he, he quit the job. You're trash, kid. Okay, little trick. If you're the only person in the world, or you're on single player, mobs will despawn if you're away from them. Basically, yeah, go above the cloud layer, and any mob that was down there that isn't named, you know, isn't supposed to be down there, will despawn. Make some babies. We need more valued employees. All you're doing is jumping. I want you to work.
Respiration three. Lure three. I think that's how you spell it. Come on, just one dude walk over. Just one. Just oh, come on. Are you really stuck? Because there's too many of you. There you go. Oh, actually, this guy. I'll be placing those blocks in here. Ow. Uh, no, 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 no. That was dumb. That was dumb. <laughs> uh, that was so dumb. That was so dumb. Uh, that, why was that? That was dumb. Like, Thorns 2. Like, why did I think that was the top guy? When clearly there is a Thorns 3. In a boat. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? You you were on top of me. Get in the boat. Oh, come on. Yes, you want to get in the boat. Man. Place your trap door before breaking the boat. Thorns three. Get in the boat. Get. Get in the boat. Alright, and you associated with that, so I need to break it. Fire aspect two. You're about to meet an untimely demise. Did I land on... I feel like it showed me right here. That, what? Did that, did that? Did that happen? Yeah. Sweeping edge three. Dude, you need to work. I mean, would it look bad if I placed it out front, though? Like, really, though. Like... I don't know, man. I don't know. I always mix these two up. I always mix these two up. I need piercing. Not impaling. I keep getting impaling. I don't want impaling. I want piercing. The grind is real. Piercing three. I'll take it. I mean, you're just one away from the max. Given that it's a book that I'll likely never buy, <laughs> it's close enough. There. Just to let you know that you have to buy two of them to get the max. Whatever, close enough. <laughs> oh, he is charging me extra. Sorry, your friend was an idiot. He jumped in the boat when there was already one of you in there. He had to go. Come on, man. Don't be stubborn. Ah. Let's see if they're still mad at me. Are you mad at me, bro? No? Okay. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. You know you want to work.
Okay. I need another trainer. Ooh, actually. <laughs> Alright, whatever. I can deal. I think I might just bump them all back and do it the right way. But, you know, kill out all the villagers. Or, or villagers. Zombies. Because what we're looking at is a situation like this. You come up to them. I mean, I guess you can in right here, but... I don't want to be I don't want them looking down on me seems like that should be like just the opposite so all that crap needs to be pushed back one block and then it'll essentially match this layout right yeah so I need to make that match that and the only way to do that is by going around the back and clearing it all out shifting everything out by one which means all these zombies Honestly, it'd be easier just to like, get more. <laughs> uh, I want nothing more than just this guy right here becoming a depth strider. I'll take two. But he doesn't want to cooperate. And I might as well get the chain going for this guy, and I think I'm going to hang him right in the center here. And I want him to be able to... Uh, I want to be able to click on him. You know? I heard it. I hear it. I need a looting sword. I hear him. Don't despawn. But of course, I don't have enough emeralds. This is why I have these guys. Gotta go fast. Yeah, I don't like this setup. I do not like this. I hear him still. Looting. Sweeping would be Whatever. I don't wanna I don't want him to despawn. I do not want him to despawn. I do not want him to despawn. I gotta re if I gotta redo this enchantment, that's fine. This slime is way, way more important than a little bit of XP and some books. Oh, it's a big juicy one too. Why does it look like something exploded down here? Or was this, uh... Oh, that was me marking the boundaries. 25. Oh, I can do 25 more trainers. Or whatever you want to call it. Trainer circuits. 25. Got some slime if you need it. Alright, so I have some good news and some bad news. Good news is, this is the outro. Bad news, uh, I lost a little bit of footage. So let me go ahead and catch you up on what's been going on here. First off, I set up this little tiny entrance here. Double door, but as you can hear when you, when you listen to it, that's the sound of a door closing. That's the sound of door opening. That's because uh, we're in hard mode, so a zombie will see this as an open door and they won't try to break it open. Now, when you're running down here, we have pressure plates. And when you hit it, there's a little circuit underneath there that will open the doors and keep them open. But, you know, obviously in this orientation, you know, close or whatever. But, yeah, show you the circuit down here. It's uh, pretty simple. So basically, you hit either of these pressure plates, it hits these redstones, repeaters going into the blocks, which will turn off the torches, which will open up the doors. 
some of the footage that I lost was uh, traveling around in the nether looking for the perfect fortress for a wither skull farm. Episode 3 is going to be interesting. But, yeah, I went ahead and I did push back all these villagers by one block, dug out everything. I didn't actually have to replace any of my trainers. I was able to just shift them around and I pulled out the center areas. So we're going to have the actual you know, entrance exit or maybe go into a different room, uh, get the flying machine doors going, right? So I did that on both sides. And yeah, if you remember, I lost two villi uh, two trainers. So taking out two of those for the doors actually just worked out. I also hooked up all the circuitry down here for this training area. Um, got another slime, but still not enough to finish the circuit, right? So this expands all the way back here. All the way around. Haven't done that side yet, but I'll I'll do that off screen. Yeah, I, I set up most of the circuitry for the outer perimeter. And yeah, got my Depth Strider 2 Max 3. So if you need Depth Strider, you have to buy two books from him. I also uh, yeah set up the lighting here. So if you look up, it's just pitch black. Um, it, it's all spawn safe. I mean, if I go over here... I can actually land on one of these. There you go. I actually got some, uh, let me remove this. Got some glow lichen right here, which protects this area. And let me show you this. I got a resource pack here, the light mob spawning 1.18. So if I click onto this, it'll actually highlight everything in a uh, green, purple, or red. Um, color inefficient so I might be off on the colors but whatever but anyways the red areas are where mobs can spawn and since those are only you know blocks in the air the only thing that can actually spawn down here are these little bats and the rest is well safe so yeah it's it's spawns spawn safe down here let's go ahead and go back to the normal fabric texture pack so yeah, back to the normal texture pack. I mean, if you look up, you have you know, dynamic lighting, I guess you call it. And it just looks really cool. Oh, and uh, yeah, we have our employee of the month in his uh, personal office here. You can still walk up and click on him. He's our Curse of Vanishing guy. And that covers every single enchantment that you can trade. Yeah, villagers are definitely OP. Yeah, so I lost a lot of footage, and this was actually recorded over a very long period of time. Uh, this build itself, the dig and the build itself, took about 20 hours, plus all these villagers. Uh, that was another maybe five hours, plus the uh, the trainers themselves, another you know half hour. Oh, and uh, yeah, let me show you this. This is pretty cool. I found a zombie spawner down here. So that actually sped up the entire process. So, bam, zombie spawner. So for most of these zombies, I actually just, you know, let them up these steps and into and into their training centers. When you look at the time lapse, you can see me flying all the way up into the air and sitting on some scaffolding and then coming down, checking it out. Uh, basically what I was doing there was I set up dark spots right inside the training area so I'd fly up spawn mobs in the you know dark area in the training area fly down kill anything that's not a zombie and lather rinse repeat obviously the spawner was uh, way faster um let's see what else did we miss on the footage oh had another end busting session so I have a full set of shulker boxes and I shared some shulker boxes with other people on the server. Yeah, I picked up extra elytra. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I just missed. So I'll try to do better. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the episode. Like, share, subscribe, all that jazz and have a good one.